Hi everyone. So I got a new camera and now old videos on this channel are going to be filmed in glorious 4K Ultra HD and I think that's pretty nice. Okay, so since we're all staying home, hopefully, and putting finishing touches on our Arch Linux anime memes, I thought I should make some quarantine content that nobody asked for, but that everyone deserved. So in this video I'm going to review 5 color schemes and rate them using 4 criteria that I came up with. Aesthetics, basically how aesthetically pleasing the theme is in my personal opinion. Functionality, which is how good the theme is for readability, whether it's easy on the eyes, and whether color syntax is consistent across different applications and programming languages. Lore, which is basically whether there's some kind of a cool and epic story behind the theme. And finally, availability, basically how many applications is the theme available for. And before we get started, I want to make a huge, humongous disclaimer. If you're going into that video expecting some kind of a scientific benchmark of different terminal themes where we like discuss them using facts and logic, you're gonna be very, very disappointed. This video is basically just shit posting and it contains nothing but my personal opinion. So do keep that in mind. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. The first theme on our list is called Dracula. Dracula is a pleasant dark theme with a slight grayish violet shade and I personally think it looks decent. The colors however are not my cup of tea because they're very saturated and they pop a lot. There's a lot of contrast going on and I don't see myself using a color scheme that is so contrasty for a prolonged period of time. And besides with themes that have this prominent color cast, in this case violet, I do get tired pretty easily so I couldn't see myself using this theme. So that's why Dracula gets 5 out of 10 for aesthetics, in my opinion. Now the functionality. The original Dracula theme was based on nothing but personal taste, according to the author. However, there is now a paid version of this theme, which is called Dracula Pro, and it's supposed to help you focus on your code by using precise color contrast and geometric colors. Now, I don't know how solid the signs behind all those terms is, but a paid color scheme, that's definitely a new one for me. Now Dracula used to have some problems with color consistency, but now there is a color spec for it, which was released I think two weeks ago. It's basically a document that outlines the definitions of colors, where each color is supposed to go, what it's supposed to mean, and I think it's pretty cool and every theme in my opinion should have this kind of document. So when it comes to functionality, I'll give Dracula 8 out of 10. Now when it comes to story, Dracula does actually have a story and it's a pretty interesting one. So the author of this theme, a guy called Zero Roca, made it back in 2013 while he was staying in the hospital because of a pancreatitis episode. While he was in the hospital, his laptop got stolen and when he got a new one, he had to set up his environment from scratch. And it was then that he realized that he actually doesn't like all the color scheme already available for his apps. And that's where he decided to make a new one. Zuri himself said that developing Dracula helped him a lot during his hospital stay because as you can imagine staying in a hospital is not the most cheerful thing in the world so yeah it helps to take your mind off things. I'll give the story 7 out of 10. There is a story which is a big plus already and it's pretty cool but it kind of has this business inspirational story feel to it and I'm not a huge fan of it. Now when it comes to availability, Dracula is available for 98 plus apps according to the official website and it's not just available for terminals, IDEs, etc but also for apps like Blender, Adobe Apps, Chrome, which is pretty cool, I think. It's still gonna take the authors some time to conform their themes with the recently released spec, but all in all, I think Dracula deserved 8 points out of 10 for availability. Now our next theme is called Groovebox. Groovebox is a retro style theme with warm pastel colors, and I think it looks very unique. It has dark and light variant, and each variant has three different contrast options. I personally don't like the color choice for Groovebox, but in this case I'm not going to let my personal taste impede my judgment on this one. I think it's a very unique theme, it's easy on the eyes, the contrast options are great, so with all that in mind I'll give Groovebox 8 out of 10 for the aesthetics. Groovebox was created by Pavel Pertsov, also known as Moreheads, and according to the GitHub repository, the main focus when developing Groovebox was to keep colors easily distinguishable, contrast enough and still pleasant for the eyes. No fancy contrast ratings or scientifically handpicked colors, but as I already said, 
Groovebox does look very pleasant because of its warm colors and the three contrast options definitely make it easy on the eyes. There is no spec sheet though when it comes to syntax highlighting and for that I had to take a few points off. So at the end, 6 out of 10. When it comes to lore of Groovebox, there is none. I actually tried to contact Pavel and ask him whether there is some kind of a cool story behind Groovebox but as of recording this video, he didn't reply to my email. I like to imagine that Groovebox was developed during a vicious grim and brutal fight with a bear during which Pavel almost lost his right arm <laughs> and since I like this story better than no story at all, I'll give myself 7 out of 10 because I'm actually very modest. Well, what do you know? After I finished filming this video, Pavel actually did respond to my email and he said that Groovebox was made after he finished his military service and moved to Moscow. It was kind of a depressing and difficult period of his life. He decided to dedicate more time to open source projects for the community and Groovebox was actually one of it. You can kind of see how the escape from depressing reality is a common theme among color scheme developers, so I think that's kind of interesting. So Pavel, if you're watching this, Thank you for the story and thank you for the amazing color scheme. Groovebox is only officially available for Vim and the ports for other applications are maintained by the community members. If you go to Groovebox Contrib GitHub repository, you'll see a lot of issues regarding color consistency and compatibility, which is actually really sad because I could really see myself using Groovebox as my day-to-day -day color scheme, but the fact that it's only officially available for Vim and the fact that the color consistency is all over the place across different applications is really unfortunate. So at the end, that gives us 4 out of 10 for availability. And that's sad. It makes me sad. So our next scheme is Solarized. And if you watched this video, you know that a lot of people dislike Solarized when it comes to the aesthetics. Solarized is one of those things that are very polarizing and you know people either love it or hate it there is no in between i think the biggest problem with solarize when it comes to the aesthetics is the fact that it's very prominent green teal shade makes it very difficult to match it with anything else in your operating system especially when it comes to gui apps unless you use a tiling window manager or only use terminals in general you'll find that with this theme your terminal or ide stands out from the rest of the operating system like some kind of an ugly avant-garde statue in the middle of Renaissance painting gallery. And yes, I know there are Solarized themes for GTK and QT, but whereas Solarized teal background looks okay in combination with colored text, when it comes to GUI apps, they pretty much become a Lovecraftian nightmare with icons as the only thing to offset the main teal color. And let's not forget the absolute abomination that is Solarized Light. No offense, Ethan. <laughs> that being said, I really like how Solarized looks in the text-based applications. The color combinations are very pleasant, the contrast is just perfect, not too dim, not too bright, but I can't ignore the community voice, the terrible light theme, and the fact that when applied to GUI apps, it makes your computer look like a scene from Shape of Water. So I'll go with 6 out of 10. However, you don't need to be a fan of Solarized aesthetics in order to appreciate its functionality. Solarized was developed by Ethan Shinover, I'm sorry if I butcher his last name, and let me tell you, this guy put a lot of work in his color scheme. Solarized features symmetric C-Lab lightness differences, consistent perceived contrast across light and dark versions, and has been tested extensively with all sorts of monitors and light conditions. The theme was in development for 6 months and Ethan didn't stop until he was 100%, actually 1000% sure that all the colors were perfect and dialed in mathematically. Whatever that means. This meticulous attention to detail is what gave us basically the most popular and influential color scheme of all time. And I think that title is well deserved. Ethan is also pretty clear when it comes to consistency across community ports. No color changes. For that I'll give Solarize 10 out of 10. I think it's the most thought out and consistent color scheme out there. What color is the sky? I'm your amor, I'm your amor. We're back and we're ready for it all over again. Okay, so lore. Honestly, there's so much to talk about when it comes to Solarized story and Ethan himself that I will probably make a movie about Solarized one day, but not today. So yeah, Ethan is actually a pretty interesting person. He used to work in a psychiatric ward at a farm. He lived abroad for like 10 plus years. And he claims that the choice of the main color of Solarized is motivated by what he imagines drowning in the ocean feel like. And yellow is, in his mind, associated with pleasant sounds and melodies. So yeah, I think that's already good enough for the lore and the story. But if you want to read more about how Solarize was developed, 
there's a lot of cool articles and I'm going to leave some down below so definitely go check it out. Once again probably the best lore of all color schemes, the thing with the ocean is goth AF so 10 out of 10. No discussion. <laughs> when it comes to availability, I don't think I need to say it, but Solarized is available virtually everywhere. And whatever terminal or code editor you're using, there's a pretty high chance that it already comes with Solarized. Ethan also maintains a GitHub repository with all the community ports for this theme. So yeah, it's the oldest theme on the list. It's available everywhere, 10 out of 10 once again. Now the next scheme on our list is called Nord, and for this one it's very difficult to stay unbiased for me because personally it's my favorite color scheme, I use it everywhere. Nord has an arctic north bluish color scheme and what developers describe as beautiful and harmonious color contrasts. It's easy on the eyes, has enough contrast, but at the same time the colors don't jump at you from the screen. It is pretty bleak, especially in comparison with the other color schemes on the list, but at the end I would say 9 out of 10, but once again I am very biased. Nord is one of the youngest color schemes on the list, it was released back in 2016, but despite that it already has a very detailed documentation and a spec sheet that outlines every color in the palette and its functions. It has a modular structure and consists of four color groups, Polar Nights, Snowstorm, Frost and Aurora. According to the authors, each color is carefully designed with a syntax meaning and a balanced color distribution for syntax elements to help to keep the focus on the important aspects. I definitely like the fact that Nord was developed not just with aesthetics in mind but also functionality. It certainly wasn't developed with obsessive mathematical precision like Solarized, but then again, that's hard to beat. So at the end, I give Nord 9 out of 10 for functionality. Nord was inspired by the beauty of the Arctic, and its colors reflect the cold yet harmonious world of ice and the colorfulness of the Aurora Borealis. There isn't really a story or lore per se, but the description is pretty poetic, so I guess that gives us 4 out of 10. As I already mentioned, Nord is the youngest color scheme on the list, but despite that, it already has 33 ports according to the website. The exhaustive documentation makes it very easy to port this color scheme to whatever app you want, so I guess I'll give Nord 7 out of 10 because it doesn't have as many ports as Dracula, but still, I think 33 apps is a lot. Now I did mention that there are 5 color schemes in today's video, but the last color scheme is not really a color scheme in the traditional sense. I think you all know which one I'm talking about, it's Pywall. Pywall is not a color scheme, but a tool that helps to generate a color scheme based on your wallpaper. I'm sure most of you know about it since it's been a beloved tool of all the risers ever since it came out. Now when it comes to the aesthetics, Pywall works really great and the color schemes that it generates look absolutely amazing. It lets you generate color schemes for your terminal, IDE, even GUI apps, and it looks especially nice if all of your apps have the same color scheme. Pywall definitely gets 10 out of 10 for the aesthetics and I think it's fair for something that integrates into your environment so seamlessly. When it comes to functionality though, well, it doesn't look that great actually. Pywall doesn't use any kind of rules when it comes to generate color scheme, so if you want to use it with your IDE or text editor for syntax highlighting, you won't be having a great time. The colors will vary wildly between different wallpapers and color schemes, so let's say one day you have comments in yellow and functions in green, but then you change the wallpaper and it all goes out of the window, and that might make it difficult to focus on your code. So unfortunately Pywall gets 1 point out of 10 for functionality. And it doesn't look good in terms of lore either, there is none, but since it's not really a serious category, I will give Pywall 4 out of 10, and besides, the dude who wrote it also made new fetch, so there's that. Pywall is available for a lot of applications and can be extended to pretty much anything, but since it's not a traditional color scheme, you'll have to generate color schemes for each of your applications separately, and if you're not into it, that might get a little bit frustrating. But then again, I think it's unfair to give Pywall a low score in this category because the level of flexibility and customizability that you get with it might be worth all the tinkering for some people. So I think with that in mind, 6 out of 10 is a fair score. So there you have it, those are 5 color schemes that I reviewed. I think those are basically the best color schemes out there. If you didn't see your favorite color scheme in this video, don't worry, just leave a comment down below and maybe we'll have a second part of this video where I will go through all the color schemes that you guys sent me. So that's gonna be it for this video. As usual, I would like to thank my patrons, Andre Rubtsov, Mitchell Valentino, Neurogamer, Ray Puria, and everyone else who supports my channel. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.